know, guys, I touched on this in the first segment of the show. I, I've never seen a franchise that's only been around six years feel like they're so steeped in history. Like everybody talks about members of this team, like it's, you know, one of the original six franchises. And I think that's a testament to how much this city has embraced them over these six years. And if so, or someone were to write a book about this franchise, I guarantee you our next guest would have a chapter all to himself. Derek Englund joining us on the athletic hockey show. Thanks so much for doing this bright and early after your team won the Stanley cup. Oh, thanks for having me. I, I, I got to ask, I mean, you, you look pretty good for uh, someone who was probably celebrating uh pretty good last, last night. How, how was last night and how are you feeling this morning? I'm not feeling too bad. I had to prioritize some things. My son's both, uh, my uh, oldest had tennis at eight and my youngest, I just dropped him off at Faith Lutheran for a flag football camp right now. So, uh, you know, I'll try to save it for Saturday when uh, there's nothing getting uh, getting up for uh, on Sunday. Were you, were you in the, in the locker room around the guys at all during, during the champagne or, or like, just take us through your night. Like where, what happened after, after the final buzzer for you? Yeah, I was upstairs in Goose Island uh, with all the uh, staff and fans and uh, a lot of a lot of pitchers um, uh, all night. Actually, kind of started. Uh, I had to go see my agent. He's uh, here. He lives here in town now. So we went to talk to him, and I got stuck on the concourse. I didn't get to talk to him at all, but I was taking lots of pictures. And then, uh, you know, up at Goose Island, uh, everyone was pumped. So a lot of pictures, uh, a lot of cheersing uh, going on, and then and then it moved out to the patio outside and. Uh, uh, had had a couple drinks out there and uh, celebrated. Derek, I was a cover of the Wild here in Minnesota, and Mark Andre Fleury. We were in Vegas for the game, and he had mentioned just how close that group was, and how much one of the most fun parts of his career uh, was that season. And he's won Stanley Cups there in, uh, in his career. Just what made that team so tight, um, so unique uh, to where guys have been around the league. I'm sure you could speak to it as your, well, your career of how special it was for you guys. Yeah, it was. Uh, I'd have to agree with him there. It was the most outstanding season, uh, most fun I had uh, uh, throughout uh, any any season I ever played. Um, you know, I think uh, it made it. We were so tight, I think, because everyone knew we had to get tight in order to accomplish anything, uh, let alone getting into playoffs and and going as deep as we did. So I think uh, that mixed with what happened on one October. Um, just brought to, not just the team together, but the whole community and, and got us uh, that fan base right away. Um, but we knew we had to be tight. And, um, you know, it was kind of, I don't know, if everyone talks about the Vegas flu that year, but, uh, you know, I, I don't think I've ever gone out uh, as much as I did that year. Uh, you, you know, it was everyone on the team, whenever there was, you know, something going on, everyone was invited. There was never anyone left out. Uh, wasn't uh you know you didn't have your groups it was just everyone all out all the time and um you know brought us closer together as a as a group and and i feel like derek that's what the culture of that team has been from day one and it's continued right up until last night i'm watching all the post you know celebration uh interviews and to a man every single member of that team was talking about how how close knit this team is. You know, Jesse mentioned in the first half of the show that Mark Stone said to him, "I got to win the Stanley Cup with thirty of my best friends." A lot of times during those post post game celebrations, you're hearing guys talk about their family and such, but a little bit more personal what they had to go through. I feel like no one wanted to talk about themselves because this team is is a brotherhood that maybe we we don't see very often anymore. Yeah, I think. Uh... The team, it's a very unselfish team. Uh, you know, you look from top to bottom, it was never, all year long, it was never I or, or, or me at all. It's all about the team and, and the sacrifice they made. And I think that definitely does make a good a team destined for, you know, r runs every year. You know, you know, I think Bill Foley has built and George McPhee and Kelly McCrimmon have built a, uh, amazing base here over six years. And, you know, missing playoff once, uh, I think still due to injuries, you know, you know, you don't miss that many guys and, and get that close. You know, if you, you don't have as many injuries, you're, you're in the playoffs six years in a row and um, you know, conference finals, Stanley cup, final loss, Stanley cup, final win. So they built a, a good base. And, and I think that was the one thing coming in that first year is we wanted to 
to start a good culture um, in that locker room. And, um, you know, we had a lot of good opinions out there. Everyone brought uh, something good from their team that uh, worked for them or, or didn't work. And, and, you know, we kind of took everyone's um, perfect team outlook and tried to build the culture here. And I think it's continuing on. Uh, you, you've seen it out there last night and throughout this whole season, no matter who's in the lineup or who, who's doing it. Uh, everyone's, everyone's just right behind the, each other. Derek, everyone's trying to build that culture, right? Like you have 32 teams out there. They're trying to do that. Everyone's look. You, you say like, we bring in good guys. Everyone's trying to do that. We're trying to figure out like how this team did it as well as it did. And I thought that Bruce Cassidy said something interesting during this playoff run. Um, I forgot exactly what he was asked, but he mentioned that because there aren't draft picks, there aren't guys that have been in this system forever. Sometimes when you you bring a new guy in, it's kind of hard to fit in. And you mentioned like there's clicks, there's groups. How much of the 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 harmony in this locker room and the fact that everyone gets along, do you think that is because everyone was new altogether? And then even the guys that have been brought in since Mark Stone, Alex Petrangelo, they're just welcomed right in and they're part of the group because everyone on this team was kind of had to get used to a new team together. There weren't draft picks that had been here forever. Like, do you think the way the team was built is a big part of why that culture is the way it is? Yeah, I, I definitely think, you know, we had a whole bunch of, you know, hardworking guys and that, that helped set the tone that first year. And um, they brought in character guys. It's that, that goes a long ways. You know, you, there was, from day one to, to now, you, you look at the, even the top stars, Eichel, Stone, all those guys, they're they're not talking about themselves uh, like you see it in, you know, other places. Uh, it's all about the team and what they can do to help the team. And, um, you know, you, you need good character guys. But I think it's – we got to start from the fresh. And, you know, I, I played in other cities. Uh, uh, Pittsburgh was, was phenomenal. But I think the, the groundwork was set by some, you know, Mario Lemieux and – and those guys, and and you go to Calgary, and uh, it was a little clicky and clicky there. Um, you know, we tried to instead of uh, being in different groups, we tried to bring them together, and we kind of went on a run after Christmas once once the team started getting together. But it's so huge, you, you know. The more you hang out, the closer you are as a group. The more you're going to go to battle for you, each other out on the ice. So you you mentioned you never went out as much as you did that season with that group and a lot of options in Vegas to do that. Um, what were your so go-to things you guys would do? Like would you guys, I know some guys live in Summerlin, but like, what were your favorite restaurant, favorite places? Like, Hey, this is Wednesday night. Oh. We're going to this place. This is our spot. We're doing this. Yeah. Um, you know, if it was down on the strip, usually you just waited for Neeler to uh, send out a text and uh, get us, uh, get us somewhere um, wherever he was going because he was uh I wouldn't not don't want to say into that stuff, but he, you know, he was uh, orchestrated everything. He's the one that uh, gave us the golden misfits and the name and all that stuff. So, um, but my favorite, you, you know, Vintner grill. I love going for dinner there. Me and my wife still to this day go there, uh, honey salt, you know, it's, it's some of the best food in the world. You get, uh, you're, you're spoiled here. So there's always good places to go. And, um, you know, you probably don't venture down to the strip quite as much now, but uh, it's a good option to have. So um, I'm always I'm always good to try new places, and, and they're popping up everywhere. I'm excited for Durango to open up uh, the new uh, stations uh, casino there on on Durango. Uh, should have some good stuff there and across the street there too. So uh, Vegas is just booming. So it's uh, it's fun fun to be part of. Players' locker is pretty good too, right? I've heard they've got good ownership. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Some 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 are kind of you know douchebags. You had to get rid of them, but uh, no, <laughs> just joking. Uh, no, no, it's uh, it's good. Actually, it's 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 tough. I, I find, you know you got Jing and you got uh, what is Lanetta right there. It's a yeah. it's a different different vibe. Uh, but uh, you know I love going to uh, the players' locker. We take the boys there all the time, and um, great food. I haven't had anything bad there. You know, beer tastes the same. Beer tastes the same every place <laughs> I go. So, um, you know, I we still love going there. It's it's great. Derek, it's almost comical to to think about this question, but I remember asking it six years ago. You know, would hockey work in Vegas? Clearly, the answer is yes. Um, they've embraced yeah. this team over the last six years. But um, have you even seen an evolution with the fan base uh, as far as what they were like year one versus what they were last night? It, 
in, in every way? I mean, have, have they evolved with this team as well? Yeah, I think so. I, I think Riley Smith nailed it on the head. You know, the first year they're cheering a cheer and, um, you know, there's a lot more hockey knowledge out there for the, you know, the fans that uh, didn't know a whole lot about hockey at first, but uh, now they do. So it's uh, growing. Uh, the youth hockey here is blowing up. So, you, you know, there's other ways for, for the fans to get uh, more knowledge with their kids wanting to play and stuff like that. But it's uh, it was amazing. Last night, uh, even you go back to practice on, I don't even know what day it is, uh, Monday, you know, I heard the first person showed up at 4 a.m. to watch practice. You know, like you don't see that anywhere anywhere but here you, you know that um there's 200 people by 7 a.m it's crazy just for practice and uh you know it's just great to see the city get behind the team like this wanted to ask you about mark stone you won the mark messier leadership award so i consider you an expert in this uh department <laughs> we talked about him in the first half of the show what makes him such a good leader what makes him the type of guy that that you know, fellow teammates get emotional about. I mean, they really look to him in in a way that you don't always see on other teams. What what makes Mark Stone just such a good leader? Oh, I think you know he's not um, he's not the guy in the locker room that's going to be yelling and screaming. But when he says something, guys listen. Um, you know, they 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 respect him. Uh, his his word goes a long ways. But then. You know, I think the biggest thing is the the emotion he plays for, like plays with, I guess you say. Um, you know, every goal he scores is an NHLer's first goal every single time he scores. And it's not like it's it's not, it's not like it's me, like I'm scoring three goals a year. He's scoring a lot of goals, uh, but he gets as excited every time. And, you know, the one thing that stuck out to me the most – Last night, when the when the final seconds are ticking down, is I don't know if you guys noticed him throwing his gloves and stick. You know, everyone else is throwing them off, and he's making sure they're hitting the rafters. You know, you know, like little things like that. That you know, I wasn't focusing on on him, but it, you notice that stuff. You, you know, so it's just the emotions he plays with and his skill skill set and and how he plays a two hundred foot game. I think is well respected by everyone in that room. I'd like to get your thoughts on Bruce Cassidy's starting lineup um, and, and how cool that was for him to him to start the five guys from the original team and, and just kind of him understanding the moment right there. Um, I think we all kind of appreciated. it. What did you think when you saw that? And, and the fact that those guys got the cup before everyone else was cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, I thought that was a very classy move. Uh, you know, it's not like they needed more energy in the building at that point, but uh if there was a way to get it, that was the way. Uh, you know, I would love to see Carrier in goal for a couple seconds, but uh, <laughs> you, you know, he's, no, he's lobbying for you, it. You know, yeah. yeah. So uh, you know, great to get those guys out there. The Misfit line has been, uh, you know, such a instrumental part of this organization, and and will be, I think, uh, hopefully for years to come. Derek, obviously, Marshall Stowe, Conn Smythe winner, a, a heck of a run there this playoffs, and I covered him in Tampa too. Such a great guy and family. I was curious what your first impression was of him when he came in, and if you have a favorite uh, memory or story with with Marshall Stowe there. Oh man, my first impression, man, this kid is loud as <laughs> shit. Uh, <laughs> you, you know, like just obnoxious at first, but uh, no, he's a he's an amazing guy. Uh, you need that guy in the locker room, the guy that's gonna. You know, when tensions are tight or stuff's not going the way it should be, he's going to lighten the mood. He's going to, you know, it's just great to have in your locker room. Like he uh, makes everyone smile. He's a good guy, but he competes. He's a, he's not the biggest guy out there, but he plays like he is. He, he's all over the ice. And, and uh, you know, he was my pick for the Conn Smythe. Um, I thought, uh, obviously, Eichel was there. And I think uh, if Hill plays uh, the whole, whole playoffs, Obviously, he, his name would be in there, I think, for sure, too. But so happy for Marchie. He's such a good guy, such a good, uh, you know, teammate and, and and parent and father, everything, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's good to see him. And, um, you know, I can I can imagine he was uh, up to his old self uh, last <laughs> night after afterwards. Yeah, did, so did, before we – sorry, go ahead, Joe. Go ahead. Sorry, I just had to ask you, did Fleury ever get you with a prank that first year? Did Fleury ever get you one? No, I I don't know if uh, man he he got a lot of rookies when I was in Pittsburgh with him too here, 
but I think uh, maybe he was scared of me or something. Uh, <laughs> you know, he always took it easy with me on me. He didn't, uh, didn't go after me too much, but uh, I hung out with him a lot. So maybe that made it harder for him to, uh, to pull a prank on me. Everyone said they were too scared to prank Derek. So I, I can confirm. <laughs> <laughs> Derek, you mentioned Derek, so being a, a, a hockey dad. Um, I see you around the rink, I think, carrying hockey bags more than anything now. Oh. What's what's it been like transitioning to to being on, on that side of things and 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 how are you enjoying it? it it's been awesome. Um you, you know, like my my youngest is all over he's in flag football right now at Faith. Uh, he does uh, the little nights right now, soccer. So he he has no idea what the heck he wants to do. Hopefully uh, in the fall, we'll start him back up in hockey again a little more, kind of giving him the sun off a little bit. Uh, my oldest is all tennis. Uh, so I'm at the tennis courts and that's a freaking everyday thing. So it's, it's, it's busy, but I'm loving every second of it. I'm home. You know, I missed a lot of the early years uh, traveling all the time. And it's just nice being at home in the city that uh, is so amazing uh, to us, my whole family. And, uh, that we love it here. So it's nice uh, not having to travel, get to sleep in my own bed every day. I'm sure my wife's probably sick of me a little bit at times, but we're getting, we're, we're getting through that. And here you are so busy. You got to get up the day after watching that Stanley cup win and, and go and, and hang out with your kids for sports. But I will ask you something like I did off the top of the show. I know you're set. You say you're feeling good and people are going to see on our YouTube page. You don't look worse for wear at all, but have you talked to any of the guys this morning via text or anything? Are they alive? Are they okay? Uh, I have not talked to anyone. I'm sure. Um, I'm sure some of them are maybe probably sleeping. Some of them still might be going. I don't know. Uh, you know, but, it's going to be a long, uh, I think the parade Saturday, I read, uh, read something that Saturday evening. So that's a long four days of, of, of getting after it. So uh, I'm sure guys are, you know, you gotta get your rest in and get ready for another day or hit the course and get, get, get back at it. You know, just don't get that. Uh, you don't want to hit that lull. Yeah. The last time the Stanley cup was awarded in Vegas, they had to watch OV party the entire summer. Yep. I'm sure that's their goal. Just just top Alexander Ovechkin. Derek, thanks so much for doing this. We really appreciate no it. Enjoy problem. the parade, and hopefully we'll talk to you soon. Uh, you can give us give us some behind-the-scenes stories of, of, of this celebration, this, this summer of partying. Sounds good. Thanks a lot for having me, guys.